Welcome to this brief introduction to augmented and virtual reality markets. In the last 20 years, virtual and augmented reality products have come a long way. From the late 90s to early 2000s with devices which showed a simple screen in front of the user's eyes, to the release of Google Glass in 2013. Then later in the decade, we had the release of a number of pivotal products, such as the Oculus Rift and the first HoloLens in 2016. And then most recently last year, we had the release of the first truly standalone virtual reality product, the Oculus Quest. This is a plot of the annual revenue of the overall augmented and virtual reality market. And initially from about 2014 to 2016, we had early sales in all sectors. Then later on, we had further growth and this stagnated in 2018 as no new models were released at the time. And this has continued to grow in 2019 and 2020. However, augmented reality is slightly less prevalent than virtual reality because at the time it was selling to markets with smaller volumes, for example, enterprise. In 2019 to 2020, we were expecting new content leading to new hardware and further continuing this growth. Over the next decade, we predict this growth to continue to a maximum of over 30 billion by 2030. Typically, products fall into one of three groups, virtual reality, mixed reality or augmented reality. For the purposes of clarity, these will be grouped into two groups, virtual reality and augmented and mixed reality. Where virtual reality products are those which are closed off from the real world and augmented and mixed reality products are open to the real world. Within these two groups we have a variety of types. We have PC products, standalone products and smartphone products. So within virtual reality a PC product is a product which is connected uh, via HDMI cable to a computer. A standalone product is one that doesn't require that computer to run. Uh, one good example of this is the Oculus Quest released in 2019. And a smartphone device is one that uses a smartphone display screen as the display for the virtual reality experience. In augmented and mixed reality, we typically have fewer PC connected products and more standalone products such as the Magic Leap. In the smartphone era, these typically are applications such as the IKEA app, which allows users to uh, virtually visualize products within their own home. So what can we compare between these products? Well, we can compare the field of view of the display. We can compare the weight and also look at the weight distribution to see how comfortable this is the device is for the user to wear. We can also look at specific properties of the display itself, for example, the resolution, the type of micro display used and its refresh rate. And all of these properties and more are covered in the ID TechX Augmented and Virtual Reality Report 2020 to 2030. There is still a way to go to create the perfect virtual reality device. The end goal is to have wireless, high quality VR. Why? Well, this opens up virtual reality to be used in many more applications. It's not tied to a physical computer in one place. In order to do this, we need advancements of computing power and energy storage. Well, the first product, which is truly standalone VR, was achieved in uh, late 2019 with the Oculus Quest. And with this will come further advancements in the technology as more companies produce standalone virtual reality headsets. The key areas for this to be adopted at a wider level would be the availability of 5G and also solving some of the virgence accommodation issues with the optics.
There are also a number of areas where augmented and mixed reality technology can further improve. They require a high brightness in order for the user to see the image in sunlight, and this can be improved further. A good resolution to show the virtual image in greater detail compared to the real world view. A good refresh rate to reduce the latency. A reduction in the motion to photon latency to reduce the feeling of motion sickness. A better power consumption, so a longer battery life, allowing a standalone augmented or mixed reality device to be used in wider applications. And also, again, solving some of these emergence accommodation issues with the optical setup. The big question is, what are the trends for the future? Well, these are four key areas which ID TechX have highlighted in their augmented virtual and mixed reality report. Firstly, the total market will increase in size to over 30 billion by 2030. The biggest portion of the total revenue in VR in 2019 was the PC VR category. However, in the future, this is, is expected to be overtaken by standalone VR as more players demonstrate this technology. The immersive experience in VR and AR is far from perfect, and we still have these side effects such as motion sickness. And in order for greater adoption of this technology, these have to be reduced. Furthermore, augmented and mixed reality products have been built to help solve the problem of the skills gap. Augmented reality products allow for the recording and digitization of manual tasks, and this means that they can help with the knowledge transfer between new and old workers. ID TechX's most recent report on augmented, mixed and virtual reality 2020 to 2030 has comprehensive coverage and detailed analysis over a wide range of areas. The report includes forecasts until 2030, over 170 products analysed, over 100 companies analysed. It characterises the markets, technologies and players within the spatial reality market. And this market is expected to grow to over 30 billion by 2030. For more information, please email us at research at idtechx.com or have a look at our website, idtechx.com slash research for more information.